Hello, and welcome to this end-to-end -end Brew and Buy Plus demonstration. In today's demonstration, we are going to show you, beginning to end, what happens when you submit a low-value order, LVO, shopping cart from the perspective of a buyer role in Brew and Buy Plus. This will include creating and submitting your cart with the receiving flag, creating a receipt, and checking on payment status. For this demonstration, I will be assuming the role of the campus buyer. After I have logged into Bruin Buy Plus through SSO, I'm going to place some items into my shopping cart, starting with a few chairs. I already know the item numbers, so I'm going to add them here into the simple search field. However, your searches may vary. If you would like to see more about creating a shopping cart and checking out, please watch our shopping cart demo in the description below. As you can see, we currently have eight items in the cart, three different types of chairs, and are ready to do a final review before we submit. We highly recommend watching our video, modify a cart to see how we can set up accounting codes, shipping addresses, and more. The link to this video is also in the description. For this demonstration, I have already set those options, but we will set the requires receiving flag. The receiving flag is optional but allows the department to require a receipt of goods and services before the invoice is released to accounts payable. It will then go through processing and payment. Certain items automatically turn on the receiving flag, such as the object code for equipment purchases and if you make a purchase through the SEV award or research SEV contract forms. Let's set the receiving flag now. Click the pencil icon next to the general section. Change requires receiving from blank to yes. Now we will do one final review of the shopping cart to ensure everything is accurate. For the sake of the demo it is. Now, let's select Validate FAU. Once this order has passed, we can then place the order. Select the Place Order button. Once an order has been successfully submitted, a confirmation page will be displayed. Because this order is an LVO, a purchase order is created with no approvals required. From the confirmation page, select the associated requisition number. It may take up to a few moments for Bruin Buy Plus to generate the purchase order from the requisition and send it to the vendor. While you wait, you can check the progress on the History tab or the workflow area in the bottom right to see what issues have come up or what's next. Once it is completed, we can navigate from the requisition to its associated PO. To view any updates on the status of the PO, navigate to the Status tab of the document. You can see here on the Status page, the PO status is pending, and the PO is exporting to the UCLA Query Database, QDB. Eventually, this PO will become complete, which will show under Document Status in Workflow. You can also see the date and time when it was submitted to the vendor. OK. It looks like my work as a department buyer for this PO is complete. I am going to turn over the demonstration to John Tan. Even though John didn't create the order, he has the same DAX viewable access as I do and can create the receipt on my behalf if I'm on leave. Let's assume that Janelle is on leave and asked me to handle receiving when the chairs have arrived. Some time has passed and a few of our new chairs have come in. First, I will inspect the purchase to make sure it matches the order. Then I will go into Brew and Buy Plus to mark them as received. If I forget, Janelle will receive a notification from Brew and Buy Plus and would let me know to follow up. From the home page, I can go to the reporting tab to view all my department's purchase orders. However, if I know the PO number Janelle created, it will be easier to search for it above. Select Purchase Orders from the drop down menu. Then enter the PO number from the packing slip. If it is the exact number, it will take you directly into the order instead of displaying a list. Now that I can see the PO, I will navigate to the Receipts tab to create a receipt. The tooltip here tells me that we are about to create a quantity receipt. 
As a reminder, cost receipts are used for services, while quantity receipts are used for goods. Cost receiving applies when the declining balance checkbox is selected during the checkout process, which flags the purchase order to allow multiple invoices against the cost of the order. Since the chairs are goods, the tab allows us to create a quantity receipt by clicking the plus button here. The header section includes a variety of optional fields that allow you to name your receipt. Indicate the date products received, the packaging slip number, and finally add any notes or information. Here you can see the items that were included on the purchase order. You can adjust the amount you have received in these fields. For this scenario, let's say that we received lines 1 and 2 in their entirety. However, for line 3, we only received 3 of the 5 items ordered. I will change the quantity received on the receipt from 5 to 3. If appropriate, I can add serial number, information, or notes to the line. If I have not received anything from a line, I can also delete that line. The next time I create a receipt against this PO, it will again populate this field with the amount from the order. If you received for part of the order, like we did, then this field will display to the remaining chairs on the order. Once I am finished, I can select the complete button. Now I can see that there is only one receipt associated with my PO. I can create a second receipt once the balance of my order arrives. For now, this completes the receiving process. Okay, so some time has passed and it's time for me to review my orders. I'm beginning to wonder what has become of my invoice payment status. Now, I could look at the invoice section of the reporting dashboard, but the PO contains a bit more information, so I am going to start there. From my PO, I can select the Invoices tab to see all invoices against this PO, in this case, just one. This is in addition to what is still open and yet to be invoiced. I can see that the remaining two chairs on my order have not yet been invoiced. I can now select the invoice number to be taken to the invoice page. I can see here in the Payment Information section why pay status has changed to paid. The payment method shows an electronic funds transfer, EFT, and I can see the record number and the payment date. If my vendor should call me, I now have all the information I need to help them locate the payment on their end. We have now seen the entire life cycle of an order, from shopping cart to requisition, sending the PO to the vendors, completing the receiving process, and finally how to look up an invoice status. Thank you, and please be reminded to watch our additional videos in the links below and to visit the resources page of ascend.ucla.edu to view more demonstrations.